Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. Finally, doing a Disney Dining Show from here in the studio. Uh, most of them have been done from uh, from on location, but we want to do some more of these in studio. And this week's show is actually being brought to you by MovingToOrlando.com, experts at helping you move to the Orlando area and live your Disney dream. Uh, in full disclosure, I am one of the owners of MovingToOrlando.com, along with one of the other folks who's here at the table with us this week, realtor Sean Falk. Hey, everyone. And not an owner in Moving to Orlando, but a realtor with Moving to Orlando, Ms. Danielle George. Hi, guys. And, of course, our producer in the back, who I always forget, Mr. Corey Fiescanaro. Welcome. So this week, um, we decided to talk about our favorite... Uh, restaurants in each of the Disney theme parks. So, um, which park should we start with? What do you think? Probably that's, Magic, right? I think that's... Well, I think Epcot... Okay, we'll start with Magic Kingdom. We'll okay. start with Magic Kingdom. Um, and, you know, as I think about favorite sit-down, like a sit-down restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, I ain't got one. I ain't got one. My favorite restaurant, if I'm going to be in the Magic Kingdom and I'm going to do a sit-down meal, I'm taking the walk over to the Contemporary and doing Steakhouse 71 because that is the best restaurant right now on the monorail loop, uh, let alone uh, just in the, in the Magic Kingdom. But as, as far as a sit-down restaurant is concerned, yeah. I'm not doing it in the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, I we, we were talking about it right before the show, and um, we were saying it was right before Pete got in here. But um, I was like, honestly, I I'll, I picked one, but I would leave before I would you know actually pick any of these. I would happily go eat at the Grand Floridian, Grand Floridian Cafe, Steakhouse Seventy One. I personally, I still like Ohana. I would eat there, Kona Cafe. I would eat at. Like, I just think within a short distance, you can get to so many better options even taking the boat to whispering canyons over at wilderness lodge but i did pick jungle skipper canteen because that is the uh for me that is the one that is acceptable of this i do like the food like i've I've always enjoyed it i like that there's something uh eclectic at least where they have some different cultures around the world represented to to a degree um and it's always a fun atmosphere the the staff are kind of in character so it's one of the more campy places that you can go yeah i like that and you know but it it really says a lot that disney's flagship resort or flagship theme park on the east coast yeah there really isn't a decent i mean i mean what what are we gonna pick tony's tony's down square (laughs) if you want your red sauce out of a can you go Mm. to tony's down square (laughs) um crystal palace i mean when it's a character, and I haven't I used been, to like it. Yeah. When it was a character meal, you know, it was, you know, the characters kind of distracted from the fact that the food was mediocre. Now we don't have characters. I haven't been back since it reopened. I haven't been back to any of these since the park reopened. So this is based on pre pandemic experiences. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, so mine actually, mine was breakfast at Be Our Guest. I will not go really? to Really? Be- what? You don't like the breakfast there? It's basically quick service at table service prices. Okay. Okay. I guess in a way, <laughs> you got me. But I just love the pastries that they offer to the table. Um, it's just the ambiance, too. I'd rather pay the $30 versus the 70 for lunch service or dinner service. I just like going there for breakfast, but they don't offer that anymore. Well, yeah, be our guest be Our Guest is a cautionary, t- for me, is a cautionary tale in what Disney does with a successful restaurant. And if you go back, if we can go back and find the link to my original review mm-hmm. of Be Our Guest and yeah. put that in the show notes. Yep. Um, I said it then. I hope they leave this restaurant alone because it was so good when it opened. And then... You know, it was successful, it was popular, and they do what they do, which is they start raising the price and lowering the quality. They've now decided that that's a strategy, not just for their restaurants, but also for their entire resort operation. But um, we, uh, uh, 
I, I, that for me, Be Our Guest is really just an example of why people find Disney overpriced. Yeah, um, and I agree. And I actually was back there uh, a couple weeks ago for a lunch service. And what they do now is they just have the beast walking around in the castle while people are eating. So it's almost like their version of a character dining. Um, I don't think that warrants the price increase at all, but <laughs> I just thought that was pretty interesting. They've had it that way for a while. Okay, first of all, their lunch is absolutely abhorrent. It's always <laughs> been the worst, the worst lunch. Like, I don't, I mean, it's just ba like, it's like, oh, it's, grilled cheese and i'm like how how like how did you make this so bad so for me their lunch has always been like the worst way worse than any quick service whatever um but <clears throat> for dinner i'll never forget the first time i went there they uh they sat us in the west wing which i find too dark in there uh especially at the dinner portion because i wanted to be out in like the ballroom scene or second choice but in the library but they put us in the west wing it was it was what it was but like they just start this like grand music and they have all this like pomp and everything going on. And they're like, it, like the master of this castle, the beast. And then he like walks in and throws his hands up and then just turns around and walks yeah. out. Like he didn't even, I was like, I don't, I like, I'm sure there's some famous something that does that from years ago, like some celebrity or something that just makes a guest appearance. Like, Hey, here I am. Yeah, so, it's so bizarre. It's like his little, uh, little, um, like the few seconds like when ryan reynolds like pops up in a, a seth rogan movie or something where you're like oh hi like you know that's a you're a big name for this dinner that just didn't spend any time with us did you like yeah yeah it it it, it was that was always awkward yeah the beasts you know cameo appearance cameo um, that's what it is yeah but um all right let's move over to uh animal kingdom Tusker House, obviously. And I 1,000% <laughs> right there with you. Um, even even since um, the reopening and the changes, food is just phenomenal. What do you think? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Tusker House would be my choice for sure. Um, I, I've always enjoyed Tusker House since the first time that I went. Um, I, their salmon is so good. Their desserts are really cool. Like, I don't... D Disney is always... a pretty much always a fail for me on the dessert side of things but they have some really unique options there a lot of coconut a lot of berries a lot of stuff that's just unique and um i, I love that buffet i've not been to uh i think you guys did the family style and yeah. so i haven't done that yeah. but I, it was great it's always been a fantastic restaurant but i've not had tiffins and that's where i want See. to try that so i think i'm a little skewed by not having yeah i don't think there. we asked you fiasco for magic kingdom what Yours was. So Magic Kingdom, mine's is hands down uh, Jungle Skipper Canteen. I do agree with what y'all are saying, though, for, for Magic Kingdom being the flagship uh, park. Like, they could use a lot more uh, to step up their dining, especially with quick service. I feel like quick service at Magic Kingdom is especially basic in comparison to some of the stuff they've done over the, the recent years at the other parks, like in Pandora and at Galaxy's Edge. They could really step their game up at Magic Kingdom. But I love Jungle Skipper. Jungle Skipper is amazing. Um, but for Animal Kingdom, mine is Tiffin's. Uh, I think for most people, uh, Tusker House is the right answer. Um, but Tiffin's is just so good. I dismissed it for years. Uh, I went for the first time about two, a little less than two years ago. Um, first of all, the restaurant itself is incredible with theming. Uh, the whole story of the restaurant is during the Imagineers uh, adventures to Africa and Asia to get a really authentic theming for the Animal Kingdom Park as a whole. Um, they like took all the coolest things they found in their journey and incorporated it into the restaurant that is Tiffin's and like you can walk around and see all the things and it says like oh this is you know uh, street signage from this place in Africa and like if you ask the server they'll get really in detail with you but then on top of that the food was so good it's expensive it's like their signature restaurant but it's it's worth it it's been a while since i've been there um and the last time last couple times i was there i was really underwhelmed with the food again when it first opened it was phenomenal yeah but now it may may have come back it does they, that does happen with a lot of these restaurants mm. where it's very cyclical that it starts out really strong it goes downhill, new executive chef comes in, wants to put his or her mark on it, and they bring it back up again. We've seen this with Jico. We've seen this with any number of restaurants. Um, 
but for me, if I if I can only choose one place to sit down and have a meal in Animal Kingdom, it's gonna be uh, it, it's gonna be Tusker House. See, I feel like Animal Kingdom is just really good with dining overall. Um, like Tusker House being one of the best character all you care to enjoy experiences you can possibly get. If you're looking for something a little bit more highbrow, you have Tiffins. And then if you're looking for quick service, you have Satuli Canteen, mm -hmm. you have Harambe Market. Like it just really hits the nail on the head for all those, anything you could really want in a day. They have definitely, definitely done a good job overall mm -hmm. with the dining options in Animal Kingdom. But for Tiffins, like, because the complaint that I always got when I worked on the travel agency side of things was the portion sizes. Like people just, that was all uh, consistently was the feedback was the portion size is too small for the food or like for what you have to pay. Mm -hmm. Do you, like, do y'all find it's filling when you go or no? So uh, I got the filet entree uh, last time I ate there and I wasn't upset with the portion size. Again, the price is pretty expensive. I'm thinking like, I want to say 58, 60 bucks for the steak. Um, and then I do remember the appetizer being very not shareable. Uh, yeah. We got the octopus appetizer and it was just four of us. And it like, oh, it God, really. Why would you want to share it? Ooh. Yeah, no, I was, it was something new for me, but it wasn't very shareable. And maybe that was for the best because I don't love octopus unless it's like fried. It wasn't fried. It was just octopus. Oh, okay. Yeah. So very chewy. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So let's um, skip over to Hollywood Studios. And there's really only one answer. I mean, I know what it is. I just can't <laughs> say it because I don't. I've not eaten there. So. I know. You it's eaten, it's brown, I'm, I'm sure it's Hollywood Brown Derby. Brown Derby. Yes. Yeah, the Hollywood Brown Derby. And and first of all, it's consistently good. Okay, this one I, I haven't found this particular restaurant to be cyclical like many of the other restaurants at Walt Disney World. I found this one to be consistent. And the fact that uh, there is, there was, the, the original Hollywood Brown Derby was in Hollywood. It was a huge uh, attraction, a huge uh, staple for the who's who of Hollywood back in the 40s and the 50s. And they have really adopted that, uh, uh, they, they, they're, they're very mindful of that legacy. And they try and adhere to that legacy. Yeah. And like one of the things in those days that was a big deal that celebrities would have a phone brought to the table and would take phone calls, like in the obviously days before cell phones. Um, and I don't know if they still do it, but they used to do it where you could have a phone brought to the table and you pick it up and you hear one of the characters. <laughs> um, wow. And so, <clears throat> but again, food quality. And then, of course, that grapefruit. That grapefruit cake uh, at dessert. That's their signature. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. everyone's told me that I have to try the Cobb salad. They're yeah. like, their Cobb salad's amazing. So it's on my list. I'm working my, I'm working my way around trying every restaurant. It's just, that's a tougher one to get. I mean, it really just isn't it is. super available. It's so, hard to get. Yeah, you got to, now at this point, you got to make a park reservation and get the dining reservation and yeah. plan out. Like, it, it's become a, a lot more difficult even as a local person to mm -hmm. spontaneously go do it because it's like, well, if I can't get a reservation for that day because I'm blocked, I can't get, I can't use my dining. So, right. Yeah, I've never ate there either. <laughs> and I feel like Pete's going to judge me, but I said sci fi dining. Theater. Oh my God. <laughs> get out. Oh my gosh. Get no, out. I really. The two of you. Yeah. The two of I you. I really enjoy it. Like, it sucks eating with more than two people, though, because you're in the cars. Right. So you can't even have a conversation with anybody. But I really liked the dessert, the sci-fi candy bar. Like, I am I just love desserts. So See, their, their turkey club is my favorite turkey club on property. God, they do it. talking about this since I hired I know. <laughs> they, do, they do it on this multi-grain <laughs> croissant. It's so good. But so my, my pick also was uh, Hollywood Brown Derby. Uh, but with the honorable mention to sci-fi because they're two different uh, categories for me. There's going to be an... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I, it's, I have to because so if I have family or friends in town who aren't huge Disney people and I want to impress them with look how good Disney food can be, 
during a Hollywood Studios day, we're going to Brown Derby because that's one of my, I'm going to take you to show you how And if you, you don't good. like them and you want to punish them no. passive aggressively, you take them to Sci-Fi Diner. Sci-Fi is Haley and I's comfort restaurant. It's one of our comfort restaurants. If it's just us, you know, we're, we're not trying to impress anybody and show people how good Disney food can be. We're going to go to Sci-Fi. But like my mom's in town with her husband, like, and we want to show them, look how good the food can be. Yeah. We're, we're taking them to Hollywood Brown Derby. Now, if this going to be an honorable mention at... Hollywood Studios. It's got to be 50s prime time. Yeah, and that was my pick. Yeah, mine is 50s prime time just because I haven't eaten Brown Derby. And I know I would like Hollywood Brown Derby, but 50s prime time is currently what I like the most. Um, I, I just, I think their food, I, I haven't had a bad meal there. I enjoy the experience. I, I have gotten feedback from people that they don't love the the interaction with the, um, <laughs> uh, you know, with the, the, they're rude to you. Yeah, that they're kind of rude to you yeah. as far as the service goes. They're not rude to you. They just kind of it's part keep of the you, show. They, they keep you in check. Like that's yeah. really like the... you're supposed to be in mom's kitchen. It's your cousins that are serving you. Yeah. So and and like part of their shtick is that they'll you know if you don't eat your vegetables they'll put you in the corner. Yeah. If they hear you using a a, a you know a bad word they'll put a sign around your neck that says potty mouth. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's I, a lot of fun. I always relate it because I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. We we have Dick's Last Resort there. I know it's yeah. another place in the country too. We always went to Dick's and Faneuil Hall though. But the first time on the 50s at prime time, I was like, oh, it's just like Disney's Dick's Last Resort, and that's kind of what I compare it to. Yeah, we um we went to a Dick's Last Resort once with my grandma, and she was very shocked to say <laughs> the least. Um, actually, she's the one who picked it and just didn't realize what it was going to be. Yeah. So we just kind of let that happen. So um, but yeah, no, fifties prime time is a really, really. I think it's a fun experience, but I know everybody's super sensitive now. So like, I could see where people would be like, "Oh, I don't like this," but I think I think it's really good. All right, so let's head over to Epcot. This was hard. This is the hardest one. <laughs> it is because you have so many mm -hmm. dining options at Epcot. Personally, for me, Chefs de France. Mm -hmm. Same. Um, it's Chefs de France. I, again, consistency. Um, it also, they do such a magnificent job of recreating that feel of being in a Parisian cafe and the food is just better <laughs> than a lot of the Parisian cafes I've been to in Paris. Um, and I just, I, I, I think I've always had phenomenal service there. I always feel that the, uh, uh, the, the quality and uh, the quality and price are very, very good. I'll give an honorable mention. I know this is going to come as a shock to people, but I'll give an honorable mention to um, uh, the UK. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Rose and Crown's good. Rose and Crown, um, because a lot of times when I would do when I do a candlelight processional dinner package with my mom, we go to Rose and Crown. We both really enjoy it. Um, but uh, for me personally, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, uh, Chefs de France. So what about you, Sean? Um, mine is, uh, first of all, I want to say, give a nod to Epcot and as a whole, with the exception of the inside Mexico pavilion sit down restaurant, I pretty much think that any of the other sit down restaurants could be transported to magic kingdom and be the winning restaurant. Yeah. So I can't think maybe, maybe Ocker shoes. I, I don't I'm not, like, but there's a, there pretty much any of those restaurants you could pull out of Epcot, put it somewhere else. And it would be very well regarded. And I will even make that argument for the quick service, the electric umbrella that used to be there. If that had not been in Epcot and it had been in Magic Kingdom, that would have been one of the most adored restaurants but that I, they would I, have had. I need someone so. one day to explain to me why they can do that mm -hmm. in Epcot. But then the Magic Kingdom is an absolute crap show. Yep. See, I have a theory. I can't confirm, but I mean, the, the way that it pieces together for me, and I know it's not going on like at the moment, but with um, the, the cultural development uh, program they got in Epcot, bringing people from those actual cultures in to work those actual countries, yeah. I think might have more uh, more carryover into the food and stuff. Than we yeah, think. but I don't know that that's the case in the kitchen. Yeah, Certainly the sure. case on the, on the serving floor, but I don't know that it's the case uh, in the kitchen. Um, it just seems like 
uh, food and beverage at Epcot. Whoever's running food and beverage at Epcot knows what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, in my opinion. And that's, I mean, that's really one of the things like things get, um, ridiculed pretty hard, especially electric umbrella. It always did, but I'm, I'm telling you like the three cheese pizza they had significantly better than Pinocchio's, whatever. Oh, I bet. Village pizza house. House. Like so any bad. of the other pizza, pl- like, like any, any item that you would have got an electric umbrella was a better quick service than any other quick serve. Mo- 90% of other quick services in the other parks. It was in the wrong park. Like people, so people ridiculed electric umbrella as why would you go there? Which I get compared to the other things. But if it were somewhere else, People would have just fallen all over themselves that it was closing. But um, so I picked Akumite. Um, that's my favorite restaurant at Epcot. Most people probably have not even gotten to try it because yeah. it's been closed forever. Um, that is going to be the signature restaurant in the Japan Pavilion. Um, it is that was amazing. so good. And you can get Wagyu. You can get, it's expensive. Like And not even like, oh, we're saying like other places are expensive. This is like a step above that. As far as the expense, you're, you're easily clearing $150, $200 a person at this meal. If you're going to get the steaks and stuff, but except the desserts, everything was phenomenal there. Everything is consistently good there. And I love the decor inside. It's supposed to be like the five Japanese elements, which I guess we don't have the same elements. I don't know. Cause like one of them's paper. So it's like paper, wood, water. And I'm like, so I'm not sure where the, the things come from with this, but um, so you're kind of set in a room that fits like whatever the, um, the theme is, but it's just never busy in there. I always feel so bad. I'm like, I want them to reopen this. Like I, uh, I'm going to be so upset if they don't bring it back. Um, Cause I just don't think it even got the chance to get its legs under it. Yeah. It was a shame. It was a shame. Um, mine is Teppanito, also in the Japan Pavilion. It is one of the best restaurants I've had. It's honestly like just a regular hibachi restaurant, but the ginger sauce that they had yes. for the dipping and what they had on the salad, I was, I'm a yum yum fan sauce. Of, <clears throat> sorry. I'm a fan of yum yum sauce. I asked for like double. I was like, no, no, no. I double need that ginger. ginger. Yes. I, it was so good. I, I don't even, I have no idea what yum yum sauce is. It's, it's the, the white sauce. It's the white sauce yeah. with yes. Japanese food. I use it on everything, like my pizza, chicken, steak. It's kind of obnoxious, but okay. it's my favorite dipping sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was incredibly difficult for me. I considered Teppanetto. I also considered Via Napoli. Um, that was almost where I was leaning to, but I got off of it because throw I was something. like. Because you know I'm going to throw something at you. Well, yeah, I, because I don't want to get anything thrown at me, but also because like going there, I, I would pick it because the pizza is my favorite, but the service is always wicked slow just by the nature of how they operate and they'll even tell you if you try to order pizza and someone else tries to order a pasta they're like it's coming out of different kitchens so it might come out at different times it will come out at different times so for that i can't give it the crown chefs de france got the crown for me um but this was a hard one there's so much good down but also up, but- i think we should also uh give an honorable mention to garden grill um for sure breakfast especially breakfast especially at garden grill mm-hmm. um and again Consistency, consistent. I think my last two or three reviews there have been, you know, relatively positive. Um, but I so they definitely get a uh, an honorable mention. So there you have it. Those are our picks for our favorite table service restaurants at the Walt Disney World theme parks. And I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again next time with another episode of the Disney Dining Show. Have a great week, folks. <laughs>